thank you for inviting me to uh, talk uh, at your meeting. Um, and the reason I'm delighted to is, is actually several fold. But the first one is uh, it's an opportunity to say a huge thank you to people who've worked uh, for many years on ventilation uh, and air quality in many different ways, uh, many of whom will be uh, with you. Um, the effects of what you've done can be seen in COVID, where it's been really instrumental in addressing some of the uh, issues, although there's a long way to go um, on, on that. Uh, and also, as, as we'll come on to, uh, in air pollution. So uh, an enormous thanks, I think, is the first thing. The second thing is that I'm doing my um, annual report uh, on air pollution this year, uh, with help from many of you. Uh, and this comes on the back of having seen the extraordinary power of respiratory infections, where ventilation also is important, and particularly, obviously, COVID, uh, where the importance of it, I think, is evidence of that uh, steadily mounted over the pandemic. Um, but also, I think it is likely that uh, effects to improve ventilation uh, to reduce the risk of COVID are also likely to have uh, important positive effects on many other respiratory infections, uh, notably flu, um, RSV in children and others. So the uh, importance of this thing really has really been very clearly demonstrated. Now, turning to uh, air pollution, most of what I'm going to say is going to be fairly obvious to this audience, but uh, a few things maybe uh, slightly less so. The first is that air pollution uh, really has multiple health effects. Um, people obviously think about respiratory and uh, that certainly is an issue, particularly for acute uh, air pollution issues, so spikes in air pollution. But chronic um, long-term exposure to air pollution of different sort, whether indoors or outdoors, has multiple uh, impacts, uh, particularly on cardiovascular disease, um, stroke and heart attack, probably on dementia, uh, and uh, in, uh, in a number of cancers and data come, that's come out just in the last week, I think, has reinforced uh, the importance of air pollution for lung cancer where not caused by smoking or as, or as a cofactor. So there are a lot of uh, issues around air pollution in addition to the issues around direct uh, respiratory infection. Um, there's some quite good news on air pollution, obviously, and that is that outdoor air pollution has steadily been improving over the last uh, many decades actually. Um, sulfur dioxide uh, lead really down to trivial levels compared to where they were. Um, particulate matter, uh, NOxes uh, reduced a bit of a plateau, but certainly for NOxes likely to be a significant reduction uh, as we move over to electric uh, vehicles. And PMs likely as well. It's obviously more complicated uh, due to um, tyre and uh, brake wear. Uh, but we are seeing improvements and uh, those are likely to continue. So uh, there is really potentially significant forward progress in the outdoor air pollution and a variety of other areas such as agriculture where the potential for progress certainly exists. Uh, what this means is that the relative contribution of indoor air pollution uh, is now going to be much greater. Now, I'm not saying that indoor air pollution is getting worse, simply that because outdoor air pollution has improved so much, the relative proportion of the uh, attributable fraction that's indoor uh, is significantly going to increase. Some of indoor air pollution in fact is outdoor air pollution that's come in and therefore that element uh, is likely to improve as the outdoor air pollution uh, improves as well. And this brings me to my first point where I think um, uh, the medical approach uh, to this and the engineering approach are sometimes slightly uh, different. Uh, air pollution overall is of no huge importance if there are no people. So it's the um, exposure of populations that really tends to lead to the big health impacts. And that's why uh, urban transport and many of the indoor air pollutants are so important is even if they may be at relatively lower levels uh, compared to some of the alternatives in rural outdoor spaces, uh, actually in terms of human health, they are of very considerable importance. So it would be nice at this point to be able to say, right, here, let's try and quantify this. But second point is the, the indoor air pollution uh, evidence base is substantially less good than the outdoor air pollution evidence base. So our ability to make um, systematic statements uh, about exactly where we are, what the contribution to ill health is, are much lower than they are for uh, outdoor air pollution. Um, 
clearly for indoor air pollution, there are broadly two approaches uh, which are mutually reinforcing. The first of which is to reduce sources of indoor air pollution. Uh, and the second, which is really, I, I know, much more central to this uh, meeting, um, is improving ventilation so as to remove whatever air, air pollutants are there uh, and dilute them out and take them out uh, of uh, the places where people will uh, be exposed to them through breathing. Now, a point which I think has been under underappreciated is that one of the reasons that outdoor air pollution has always commanded very significant and broad uh, public um, support is because it seemed to be something where if someone else pollutes, I and my family get the disbenefits. So it is an entirely appropriate place for the state to act because essentially what the state is doing uh, or what professions are doing is putting in regulations, laws, uh, economic incentives to ensure that other people don't pollute the environment for everyone around them. The indoor space has always been seen uh, rather monolithically as a private space in much of the discourse, but this of course is untrue. And this is, I think it is quite important actually in, in terms of what is the role of government regulation and various other things to differentiate between private indoor space where the person polluting is the person who's affected and their families uh, and provided they understand the risks they're taking that's an important uh, proviso uh, that that is in a sense in their own private space and then the public indoor space which makes up, which makes up a lot of uh, indoor space uh, in a pure sense that would include things like hospitals schools uh, supermarkets but there are quite a lot of spaces that are in between those two uh, various forms of um, uh, industry, uh, various forms of workplace, for example, are somewhere between a purely public space uh, and a, like a public library, and a purely private space, uh, a home uh, environment where only the family are present. Uh, in reality, those also tend to present different engineering challenges. Uh, many of the big um, public spaces tend to have heavily ventilated uh, spaces uh, with air conditioning or heating uh, built in um, whereas private spaces tend in the UK at least this is less true in some other countries uh, to rely quite heavily for ventilation on just essentially opening the windows um, <clears throat> so there are there are different challenges uh, so the role of the state I think is important and I think in particular we need to concentrate on the public indoor spaces because they are much closer to the outdoor one in terms of what we can do now there is something in indoor uh, public space, there are a variety of quite important technical differences to where the air pollution uh, comes from in the indoor spaces, for example, paints and uh, other, uh, other chemicals, which you really wouldn't get in high concentrations in an outdoor space. But um, there are also uh, some very significant uh, tensions and of the most important of those, uh, but not the only one, I, I'm gonna highlight two, uh, is the tension between uh, good ventilation on the one hand uh, and um, optimizing heating in the winter and in some environments cooling in the summer uh, so that you don't waste energy and you maintain a uh, safe temperature because actually low temperatures and in high, high, very high temperatures, high temperatures, so the extremes, are also dangerous for health. So, uh, and if a system is inefficient, it'll also use up energy, which goes against all of the uh, carbon uh, uh, reduction uh, measures that we're all trying to do. So trying simultaneously to maintain a reasonable balanced temperature in the range that humans operate in uh, safely and comfortably, uh, maintain the minimum amount of energy uh, expenditure for that, and to maintain good ventilation uh, are, can potentially work in tension with one another, and we need to resolve that tension through engineering means, uh, if uh, to the best to the best of our ability. The second thing, which of course is important, is the biggest effects of air pollution tend to affect uh, people from the most socioeconomically marginalised groups. And if, in our attempts to improve air pollution, we increase costs uh, to them in other ways, uh, that is actually something which is counterproductive. Uh, to their wider needs, including their health needs. Uh, and this I'm talking here particularly the most about the most economically marginalized um, communities. So I'm, I'm highlighting those because I think 
bad policy is policy where policy goals are uh, addressed in isolation and then you find in retrospect or don't take full, full account of the fact that one policy aim, for example, to reduce carbon, uh, is in some degree of tension with another policy aim, for example, reducing uh, air pollution through diesel uh, engines. That was a, 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 an obvious example. There are others. But I'd like to really loop back to um, where I started. Uh, there have been stunning improvements in uh, air pollution in the outdoor space, largely driven by engineering. This has been an, an engineering led improvement, just as the improvements in uh, water quality in the last century, which were transformational health, were engineering led. Uh, the solutions to most of these issues are also likely to be engineering led. It'll be different disciplines within engineering which do that. Uh, but uh, bringing together the ingenuity uh, of people on the civil, uh, mechanical and uh, electrical uh, and, other, and um, other engineering and chemistry um, skills is going to be central to addressing indoor air pollution. But I would encourage people to think quite systematically about this in this uh, indoor public space, indoor private space and continuum uh, uh, way of thinking about things, because I think that does help us, those of us who are involved in policy, to come up with useful solutions. Uh, I hope the conference uh, is extremely interesting and productive, and I'm sure it will be. Thank you.